White Anglo-Saxon Protestant is an informal term, sometimes derogatory or disparaging, for a closed group of high-status Americans of English Protestant ancestry. The term applies to a group believed to control disproportionate social and financial power. The term WASP does not describe every Protestant of English background but rather a small restricted group whose family wealth and elite connections allow them a degree of privilege held by few others. When the term appears in writing, it usually indicates the author's disapproval of the group's excessive power in society. The hostile tone can be seen in an alternative dictionary, the WASP culture has been the most aggressive, powerful, and arrogant society in the world for the last thousand years, so it is natural that it should receive a certain amount of warranted criticism. People seldom call themselves WASPs, except humorously. The acronym is typically used by non-WASPs. Scholars agree that the group's influence has waned since the end of World War II, with the growing influence of Jews, Catholics, African Americans and other former outsiders. The term is also used in Canada and Australia for similar elites. Origin of term, historically, Anglo-Saxon referred to the Anglo-Saxon language of the inhabitants of England before about 1150. Since the 19th century it has been in common use in the English-speaking world, but not in Britain itself, to refer to Protestants of English descent. The W and P were added in the 1950s to form a witty epithet with an undertone of waspishness. The first published mention of the term WASP was provided by political scientist Andrew Hacker in 1957, indicating WASP was already used as common terminology among American sociologists, though the W stands for wealthy rather than white. The term was popularized by sociologist and University of Pennsylvania professor E. Digby Boltzell, himself a WASP, in his 1964 book The Protestant Establishment. Aristocracy and caste in America. Boltzell stressed the closed or caste like characteristic of the group, arguing, There is a crisis in American leadership in the middle of the 20th century that is partly due, I think, to the declining authority of an establishment which is now based on an increasingly caste like white Anglo Saxon Protestant upper class. Expansion Sociologists William Thompson and Joseph Hickey noted the expansion of the term's coverage over time. WASPs vary in exact Protestant denomination, however the great majority have traditionally been associated with Episcopal, Presbyterian, and other mainline Protestant denominations. Today, the usage of the term has expanded to include not just English-American elites but also families of predominantly non-English Protestant Northern European and Northwestern European origin, including Scottish Americans and Ulster Scots, Dutch Americans, French Huguenots. German Americans, and Scandinavian Americans. In recent years, another minor usage has appeared in northeastern states to refer to a fashion style or a preppy lifestyle. Culture attributed to WASPs, the WASP elite dominated much of politics and the economy, as well as the high culture, well into the 20th century. Anthony Smith argues that nations tend to be formed on the basis of a pre modern ethnic core that provides the myths, symbols, and memories for the modern nation and that WASPs were indeed that core. WASPs are still prominent at prep schools, Ivy League universities, and prestigious liberal arts colleges, such as the Little Ivies or Seven Sisters. Entry to these colleges is based on merit, but there is nonetheless a certain preference for legacy alumni. Students learned skills, habits, and attitudes and formed connections which carried over to the influential spheres of finance culture, and politics. WASP leisure included upscale activities such as foreign travel, equestrianism, and yachting a Euro expensive pursuits that need both leisure time and affluence to pursue, and which sociologists such as Thorstein Veblen have pointed to as a marker of social standing. Social registers and society pages listed the privileged, who mingled in the same private clubs, attended the same churches, and lived in neighborhoods of Euro Philadelphia's Main Line and Chestnut Hill neighborhoods. New Jersey's Princeton, Florida's Palm Beach, Fairfield County, Connecticut, the coast of Maine, particularly Bar Harbor, Newport, Rhode Island, Manhattan's Upper East Side, Westchester County, New York. 
the Hamptons of Long Island. Boston's Beacon Hill. McLean, Alexandria, and Georgetown all in the Washington metropolitan area. Cincinnati's Village of Indian Hill and City of Springboro. Cleveland's Shaker Heights, Village of Britannel, Hunting Valley, Kirtland Hills, and Gates Mills. Detroit's Gross Point, Michigan. And Chicago's Lake Forest, Knilworth, Glencoe, and Highland Park are all examples. A common practice of WASP families is presenting their daughters of marriageable age at a debutante ball, such as the International Debutante Ball at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. In the Midwest, WASPs favored the University of Michigan, Northwestern University, and University of Chicago. In the Detroit area, WASPs dominated the wealth that came from the huge industrial capacity of the automotive industry. After the 1967 Detroit riot, they tended to congregate in the Gross Point suburbs. In Chicago, they are present in neighborhoods such as Knilworth in the northern suburbs and Oak Park in the eastern suburbs. David Brooks, a commentator on class who attended an Episcopal prep school, writes that WASPs took pride in good posture, genteel manners, personal hygiene, pointless discipline, the ability to sit still for long periods of time. Attacks on the WASP image, in 1939, the Daughters of the American Revolution denied prominent black singer Marian Anderson permission to sing in Constitution Hall. In the ensuing furor, the president's wife Eleanor Roosevelt publicly resigned from the DAR and arranged for Anderson to sing at the Lincoln Memorial before a cheering crowd of 75,000. Also in 1939, the old elite came under ridicule in the smash Broadway comedy hit, Arsenic and Old Lace. The play was later adapted as the Hollywood film, Arsenic and Old Lace. The play was written by Joseph Kesselring, a former music professor at Bethel College, a school of the pacifist Mennonite Church. The play appeared at a time of strong isolationist sentiment regarding European affairs. The film tells how the hero Mortimer Brewster makes the horrifying discovery that his two beloved maiden aunts are serial murderers of homeless old men. The Brewsters trace the family back to the Mayflower, and the walls of their genteel Brooklyn home are hung with oil portraits of their ancestors. Religion is repeatedly alluded to. The Brewsters have delusions of grandeur. Mortimer's brother who lives with the two sisters believes that he is President Theodore Roosevelt. The sisters see themselves as philanthropists who help lonely old men. Wearing old lace, the two kill old men with wine laced with arsenic. The Brewster family is so eminently respectable that the Irish police reject the idea that there could be 13 murder victims buried in the basement. In the finale, Mortimer Brewster discovers he was adopted and is not really a Brewster. If he is not a member of the Brewster family, he realizes he will not become insane or a murderer. In the film's closing scene he exclaims I'm not a Brewster, I'm a son of a sea cook. As he gleefully takes his new bride on their honeymoon. Gunter argues that the deep theme of the film is the conflict in American history between the liberty to do anything, and America's bloody hidden past. He notes that the evil disfigured nephew was played by Raymond Massey. He was well known at the time for his portrayal of Abraham Lincoln. Now he is a disfigured monster, and Gunter suggests a link between Lincoln and American atrocities. Fading dominance, it was not until after World War II that the privilege and power in the old Protestant establishment began to decline. Many reasons have been attributed to the decline of WASP power, and books have been written detailing it. Self-imposed diversity incentives opened the country's most elite schools. The GI Bill brought higher education to new ethnic arrivals, who found middle-class jobs in the post-war economic expansion. Nevertheless, white Protestants remain influential in the country's cultural, political, and economic elite. In the federal civil service, once dominated by those from a Protestant denomination, especially in the Department of State, Catholics and Jews made strong inroads after 1945. Georgetown University, a Catholic school, made a systematic effort to place graduates in diplomatic career tracks, while Princeton University, at one point lost favor with donors because too few of its graduates were entering careers in the federal government. By the 1990s there were a Euro-O-Rawley the same proportion of WASPs, Catholics, 
and Jews at the elite levels of the federal civil service, and a greater proportion of Jewish and Catholic elites among corporate lawyers a euro in 2014, the Supreme Court, for instance, is entirely composed of Catholics and Jews. Historian Charles J. Scalise coined the term WIP for Italian Americans who convert to Protestantism. With the 2010 retirement of John Paul Stevens, the U.S. Supreme Court has no white Protestant members. The University of California, Berkeley, once a WASP stronghold, has changed radically. Only 30% of its undergraduates in 2007 were of European origin, and 63% of undergraduates at the university were from immigrant families, especially Asian. A significant shift of American economic activity toward the Sun Belt during the latter part of the 20th century, and an increasingly globalized economy have also contributed to the decline in power held by Northeastern WASPs. While WASPs are no longer solitary among the American elite, members of the patrician class remain markedly prevalent within the current power structure. Related political culture, WASPs were major players in the Republican Party. Politicians such as Leverett Salt and Stahl of Massachusetts, Prescott Bush of Connecticut and Nelson Rockefeller of New York exemplified the pro-business liberal republicanism of their social stratum, espousing internationalist views on foreign policy, supporting social programs, and holding liberal views on issues like racial integration. A famous confrontation was the 1952 Senate election in Massachusetts where Irish Catholic John F. Kennedy defeated WASP Henry Cabot Lodge, Jr. However the challenge by Barry Goldwater in 1964 to the Eastern Republican establishment helped undermine the WASP dominance. Goldwater himself had solid WASP credentials through his mother, but was instead mistakenly seen as part of the Jewish community. By the 1980s, the liberal Rockefeller Republican wing of the party was marginalized, overwhelmed by the dominance of the Southern and Western conservative Republicans. Catholics in the Northeast and the Midwest, usually Irish American, dominated Democratic Party politics in big cities through the ward boss system. Catholic politicians were often the target of WASP political hostility. In Quebec politics, René Levesque attracted controversy in 1970 by attacking what he called WASP arrogance. Anglo-Saxon as a modern term, Anglo-Saxons before 1900 was often used as a synonym for all people of English descent and sometimes more generally, for all the English-speaking peoples of the world as such. For example, American missionary Josiah Strong said in 1890, in 1700 this race numbered less than six million souls. In 1800, Anglo-Saxons had increased to about 20,500,000, and now, in 1890, they number more than 120 million. In 1893 Strong predicted, this race is destined to dispossess many weaker ones, assimilate others, and mold the remainder until it has Anglo-Saxonized mankind. Before WASP came into use in the 1960s the term Anglo-Saxon filled some of the same purposes especially when used by writers somewhat hostile to an informal alliance between Britain and the U.S. It was especially common among Irish Americans and writers in France. Anglo-Saxon, meaning in effect the whole Anglosphere, remains a term favored by the French, used disapprovingly in contexts such as criticism of the special relationship of close diplomatic relations between the U.S. and Britain, a more market-oriented economic approach and discussion of perceived Anglo-Saxon cultural or political dominance. It also remains in use in Ireland as a term for the British or English, and sometimes in Scottish nationalist discourse. American humorist Finley Peter Dunn popularized the ridicule of Anglo-Saxons circa 1890-1910, even calling President Theodore Roosevelt one. Roosevelt insisted he was Dutch and invited Dunn to the White House for conversation. To be genuinely Irish is to challenge WASP dominance, argues politician Tom Hayden. The depiction of the Irish in the films of John Ford was a counterpoint to WASP standards of rectitude. The procession of rumbunctious and feckless Celts through Ford's films, Irish and otherwise, was meant to cock a snoot at WASP or lace curtain Irish ideas of respectability. In Australia, Anglo, or Anglo Saxon refers to people of English descent 
while Anglo-Celtic expands to include people of Irish and Scottish descent. In France, Anglo-Saxon firstly refers to England, and by extension to all English-speaking countries. It has a neutral meaning, and can be used both in a positive sense or pejoratively. In a negative use, it can refer to immoral capitalism, where money is more valuable than human life. It also has had more nuanced uses in discussions by French writers on French decline, especially as an alternative model to which France should aspire, how France should adjust to its two most prominent global competitors, and how it should deal with social and economic modernization. Outside Anglophone countries, both in Europe and in the rest of the world, the term Anglo-Saxon, and its direct translations are used to refer to the Anglophone peoples and societies of Britain, the United States, and other countries such as Australia, Canada and New Zealand are Euro areas which are sometimes referred to as the Anglosphere. The term Anglo-Saxon can be used in a variety of contexts, often to identify the English-speaking world's distinctive language, culture, technology, wealth, markets, economy, and legal systems. Variations include the German Angels Achsen, French Anglo-Saxon, Spanish Anglostecubden, Dutch Anglosaxish, Italian Anglosassen, Portuguese Anglosaxa Poundo, Polish Anglosaski, Catalan Anglosaxacubed, Japanese Angurazakuson, and Ukrainian Eth 1 half th cubed th th 3 quarters nth degree th nth. See also Boston Brahmin, Corporatism, Elitism, Ethnic Elite, Irish Catholic, Ivy League, Old Money, Socialite, Upper Class, Yankee, Notes. References, Alan, Irving Lewis. Wasp a Euro from Sociological Concept to Epithet, Ethnicity, 1975-154+, Alan, Irving Lewis, Unkind Words, Ethnic Labeling from Redskin to Wasp ISBN 9780897892209, Brewer Kaiser, Richard. The Way of the WASP How It Made America and How It Can Save It so to speak, 171 pages. ISBN 9780029047217. Chibble, Emile, The Rise of the Anglo-Saxon, French Perceptions of the Anglo-American World in the Long Twentieth Century, French Politics, Culture and Society 31 No. 1 PPA 24 Euro 46, Cookson, Peter W. Purcell, Caroline Hodges, Preparing for Power, America's Elite Boarding Schools ISBN 9780465062683, Davidson, James D. Pyle, Ralph E. Rays, David Five Persistence and Change in the Protestant Establishment, 1930-1992, Social Forces, Volume 74, No. 1. PPA 157 a Euro 175. Friend, Tad. Cheerful Money, Me, My Family, and the Last Days of WASP Splendor. ISBN 9780316003173. Fussell, Paul. Class. A Guide Through the American Status System ISBN 9780671792251, Kaufman, Eric P. The Decline of the WASP in the United States and Canada in Kaufman, ed. Rethinking Ethnicity pages 54 a Euro 73 ISBN 9780415315425, King, Florence. WASP, Where Is Thy Sting? Pyle, Ralph E. Persistence and Change in the Protestant Establishment, Salk, Susanna. A Privileged Life, Celebrating WASP Style, Shrag, Peter The Decline of the WASP, Useem, Michael. The Inner Circle, Large Corporations and the Rise of Business Political Activity in the US and UK.